from like various parts of the country. They are all over India. Yeah, yeah, these are all over India. We send the. Okay, good afternoon. Sir, uh, we will be sharing the talk. Please start with the introduction. Yeah. Yeah. So good afternoon, everyone, and uh, we are here for the final session of the entanglement lecture series. So hope you all enjoyed the previous sessions, and uh, now we have Dr. Vinay Kamble from the School of Physics. With us for the final session, and uh, Dr. Vinay Kamble is an associate professor at the School of Physics at uh, Isar Tiruvannathapuram, and uh, he studies his research interests uh, over around nanostructures, thin films, magnetic semiconductors, thermoelectric materials, gas, solid gas sensor, and many other things. So he was awarded the Junior and Senior Research Fellowship by the Ministry of Human Resource and uh, Human Resource Development of Government of India. to pursue the phd in uh, material science at uh, indian institute of science and uh, yeah today we have dr kamble to talk on a very exciting topic and uh, we, we all know the topic which is uh, seeing is believing so let's all welcome dr vinay kamble for the talk and uh, welcome you all for the talk also okay uh, i suppose i can start with yeah yeah sure Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Ravi, for a kind introduction and kind words. Uh, so I I gave this title, "Seeing is Believing." Uh, I'm not sure how many of you know this phrase. Uh, in Indian context, I think there is something much more relevant. I mean, we saw all the television ads, right? There is one uh, detergent ad which says, "Pehle istemal kare, fir vishwas kare." So it says you. see by your eyes before you believe something so uh, that is the theme of the today's talk and i suppose since all of you are post which is like plus to wide wide range and um, uh, many of the topics uh, i'm not going to take i mean teach you anything new uh, so to say so uh, probably we are going to just validate some of the facts which we have uh, which we have learned in our high school or we have uh, been learning right now okay so let me start with my presentation so i'm sharing my screen so you all can see my presentation okay. you going to uh, see how do we see that's also uh, a concept and uh, something uh, interesting about what we have been learning right now so uh, okay so it starts with this uh, gif image here you can see there are couple of bulbs lighting one after the other and kind of tossing each other where the last one kind of that it looks like the current goes from one to the other and uh, it kind of does this this particular thing it's it is uh, something which is called as um, momentum conservation we are going to come to that here it looks like the bulb kind of oscillates goes to the end and then comes back transfers that momentum to all the others and then uh, it goes all the way to the other end and by a japanese guy called as yasuki kariya okay this asobi means play nothing uh, very high funda here he just computer uh, simulation by is he kind of synchronized the speed of this oscillation which is mechanical oscillation now the electricity has nothing to do with it the speed of bulb lighting with the time it may take to oscillate now how does one calculate this time so precisely and so on and so forth so 
he uh, that is something which is very interesting here okay so what was done is he kind of generated a computer program which will do this synchronization of current with this oscillatory behavior now we have to see this oscillatory behavior first of all what uh, does it but isn't it fantastic i mean it looks nice right it looks mesmerizing it looks looks something which is very uh, uh, like a magic so let's let's uh, so one part is clear that the current is actually has got nothing so it is being computer generated uh, time sequence for the current pulse regarding the oscillations that is something which we are going to see so it is a, a simple device right now i don't have it in my hand otherwise i would have shown you uh, that thing it it is something which has a series of pendulums which are hung by two strings from two parallel rods right and you take out one from one end and release it it will go and collide with the other one and it will transfer some energy transfer some momentum okay it will transfer the momentum to the other one the other one will pass it on to the next the next will pass it on to the next and so on it will continue till the last one and the last one taking that momentum will again will be kind of pushed away and when it reaches to the maximum displacement it would come back okay so this is what is also happening with the bulb but the you know to do the trick with the bulb the problem is that if it goes with such a momentum with glass it is going to be a problem you know it uh, so they have kind of very carefully designed it in such a way that it doesn't shatter the glass but it does so uh, so what do we have we have series of pendulums and these series of pendulums one one of them is been given a small displacement it moves away it comes back from the mean position uh, from the maximum displacement to the mean position and it kind of uh, uh, basically transfers that momentum now i don't have these many pendulums what i have right now is just one pendulum with me we can just have a look at it right i am just starting my other camera from here okay so that's okay i should keep it like here so i have basic camera i have a pendulum here which is being hung by from the top okay here can you see my camera obviously is it visible ravi yeah yeah it's visible Okay. Yeah. Uh, because my can see the pendulum. Okay. So this is the pendulum. Yeah. You can see the pendulum. This is a heavy bob which is being hung by a very massless string. Now massless means practically it's impossible. It is massless compared to the bob. The bob is really heavy. It's made up of metal alloy. Okay. So now that is being hung from a, a vertical position here, and and from there it is now I we have marked some scale here. it says zero oh it's here okay it says zero to something what i do is i kind of displace it from its mean position a little mean position is at zero i have adjusted it in such a way that it hangs here and i kind of displace it a little let's say 2 cm and leave it what it does is so i i should be careful there should be only a horizontal displacement eh? it goes on doing this oscillations back and forth from plus 2 to minus 2 and so on and so forth so as much as practically it would it should go on for long time but it kind of then does it until it damps out all, all its energy for sufficiently longer time it will do it now what keeps it going is that whatever initial displacement we have been we have given it it will lead to some kind of a energy which is stored in that and that energy if it keep it going it will uh, it will convert into kinetic energy and when it comes to the rest position 
and it will completely be potential then from the rest position it will at the center it will be completely kinetic because it's moving so i imagine like this if i have many such pendulums i can actually put them in parallel with each other vertically and then take one and release it the moment so when it comes to the mean position it has maximum kinetic energy and it has got certain velocity because of that and that velocity and its mass it will have some momentum and that momentum is transferred to the next one now here there is no second pendulum to take it but if that comes that will take it and that will also that will execute this get displaced like the one we have displaced the first one and so on it will continue so it will go to the last one the last one will get displaced and come back and so on and so forth it will happen so this is about your uh, simple pendulum and this is exactly what those uh, that gentleman has done with light bulbs so what happens as i said we have some we have a body which is being displaced by its mean position it is hanging from a string right and the only displacement possible is in the horizontal direction now here and because of which it executes shm shm is simple harmonic motion okay now so in in the all all uh, in the entire process the entire momentum that that particle has gained when it comes to mean position it come it comes to complete rest and the velocity is transferred to the next one and the other is you have a water body which has ripples i have named it can you can one of you tell me that what is the similarity between these two things you can uh, unmute yourself and tell me would it is there any similarity between the two yes okay let me give you this okay you lost this one crore kon banega karodpati so we have this answer which it says yes there is a similarity and both are oscillatory in nature so there is a spring here which kind of of a wave okay and we are going to see how waves are also oscillatory in nature so that is what these uh, which makes it common between the two so we have a contain for today's talk we are going to see and uh, before we believe what are waves and oscillations what is a simple harmonic motion we have already seen an example the concept of wave when i say amplitude wavelength frequency phase etc what are these things and how can i physically identify or physically relate to these quantities okay and the types of waves that we are going to see and some fun with light waves or light right now or you have learnt in your high school or right now also in class 12 optics Uh, which is like colors magnification refraction interference diffraction etc etc and uh, in various kind of objects okay so let's start okay so i guess uh, i still yeah i have i kind of invested in 15 minutes in this okay so what are waves waves are basically oscillatory motion like this pendulum which i showed you this uh, this duck which is sitting on the wave of a water front it is also executing some kind of a circular motion or a periodic motion that means after a regular interval of time it comes back to its original position okay so the whole process here is also oscillatory you may have felt this thing when you actually sit in a boat uh, when you are having a boat ride on uh, maybe in bigger seas and so on like that right so what you get is basically an oscillatory feeling because of the continuous uh, waves which are coming in from the uh, from the sea surface okay something like this duck we also feel a back and forth motion but actually what we are doing is in we are actually making a, a vertical circle 
So what exactly we are doing? Like here, you you see there is the mass which is connected by a spring. Unlike my pendulum where I had a thread and a mass, if I take the same mass and hang it with a spring and leave it, uh, uh, it will rest at some mean position of the spring depending on the mass, right? And if I stretch it a little down and leave it, uh, like very small amplitude, uh, very small displacement, trace. I can actually trace with this particular thing, right, which is traveling. Um, okay. hmm, so, which is traveling along the way, you can see here, and in form some kind of an oscillating motion, we can visualize as. Okay. What is the axis here? That means we look at the displacement in time as a function after some time has come back. So when it comes back to the same position, when it comes back to the same position. Basically, uh, executing some kind of periodic motion, and the time is called as the period or time it takes. What are the example? Example: certain light waves or our current or uh, whatever electricity we are now uh, kind of working. Right? So these are the examples. Then, uh, what does these waves look like? They be, the waves look like this. You see, these are the particles. For example, I take a I take these number of red dots, okay, and these balls are again hanging with vertical spring from a certain uh, top position, and they are synced and frozen. However, are the particles moving? No, the particles are in their position only. They are only moving up and down, and whereas the wave looks like it is moving along x direction, or you may also tell me that it is moving along y direction. That's fine. That's also fine, but it it looks like the wave is moving horizontal, not like the particle in the same direction as that of the. To this, there are how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen such uh, ball. I mean, thirteen and fourteen one comes back. So I attach it to a circle, okay, and divide the circle into fourteen such parts. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Likewise, I will have some more, six more, and I can make fourteen such arcs. And each of this, I kind of tied this. Like that. And if I Let's assume that I have as many as uh, fourteen, uh, thirteen things here, right? And what I do is I go on rotating this circle. As this circle rotates, this wave would look like it is moving because as this will go down, this thread will get pulled up, right? Up like this. So it looks like uh, with this each of this particle, it would look like the wave is actually moving. Okay. Now, what we have done is instead of rather rotating it in complete circle, what these guys are doing it, they are just they have connected it to a circle, and they are just moving it up and down. Do you see a wave? Now, when this they move it just one eighty degree. Up and down like that. You see a wave which is also flipping top and bottom like that. So it is a phase difference of 180 degree between the two because the circle makes 360 and 180 degree is half of it. So we are only rotating with half. If I do it with quarter, I would get it to 90 degree phase difference between each of this. So that is what is. So if I kind of start it with here, okay. So, with respect to this, to this, there is a 360 degree phase difference or 2 pi. This one is, so uh, yeah, 
So this is one for complete lambda that we get. This is 360 degree. Half of it is 180 and then 90 degree of 14 and 45. Each angle uh, of the circle, I can associate it with each particle and that angle is called as a phase. Okay, so that phase is nothing but angle of the circle that each particle can be associated with. So how do I write this uh, phase? So if, for example, if it starts from zero, now I have arbitrarily stopped the wave somewhere, right? You see that the when time t equal to zero here, right? This is zero. At zero, it is not at mean position. It is starting with some amplitude. It is starting with, this is the maximum amplitude A, what one can get, right? And this is the position that is left. So this displacement divided by this will give me the complete uh, the phase that it can actually have, right? So it is starting with a certain non-zero uh, phase and the zero phase difference comes here, right? So now it is arbitrary, in fact, because but it, this difference will come into the picture if there is another wave, because then there can be a wave which, which will probably be not starting exactly like this, but it may start something like this. Right? So here it has a phase difference of zero, whereas this fellow has a phase difference of non-zero. Something is there. So that is, so if I can write one wave equation, I can write it as simply x times t as the velocity, uh, sorry, x by t as the velocity. And here it is uh, having a different phase. So that phase I have to add into the, uh, the angle for the wave sign. Okay. So this is what they have prepared. Now let's look at the other kinds of wave. Okay. Now you can see the springs here. Now these, each of these springs are being pulled and pushed at different uh, rate or at different speeds. Now you can see when the springs are actually moving, there is something where there is compression, there is something where there is actually uh, displacement larger, which is uh, rarefraction. Okay, so you can see that it is much closer here. Similarly, it is closer here, it is not so close here, like that. It is not so close here, whereas it is closer here. So I can, depending on the speed, it's the same spacing, however, depending on the speed, I can identify different regions of the uh, compression and rarefraction. So that is something which is called as, it's another kind of wave. It is a trans, it is a longitudinal wave and you can see it where, I mean, it is basic, the examples are, you can see it in sound or things like that. Like for example, you take a tube and fill it with air and start giving some kind of oscillation from here, the oscillations will percolate or they will pass on like this, right? And the, this is a kind of example that the way sound proceeds, you can see that each of the particle, it is not going ahead, it is just moving back and forth and the wave actually moves ahead. So in this direction, in this case, the direction in which the particles move is not perpendicular, but it is along the direction of the wave. So the wave also proceeds in the same direction as the direction of oscillation of the particles. So this is called as a longitudinal wave. Now we can see an example of this. This was done by some of our, again, Anvesha friends, your uh, uh, friends from our science club, right? What they have done is we have taken a tube and this tube is filled with air. Okay. In fact, uh, we want to do some, we want to visualize it. So what we have done is instead of air, we filled it up with LPG. LPG is liquefied petroleum gas, you know, liquefied petroleum gas, the one which we use for cooking in our kitchen. So what happens when you kind of show some fire, it will burn. So, and in this tube, let's say we fill it with LPG. Right now, there is no uh, motion which is given to this. But here, if I put a speaker, okay, this is my speaker, and the speaker starts giving this sound waves. Once the speaker starts giving this sound wave in this direction, these waves will start oscillating, and it will fill up the entire column or the tube, right? And if there are openings here in this tube, 
so wherever there is a lesser density there will be a lesser gas coming out leaking wherever there is a higher density there will be a higher gas coming out from the tube right if i uh, light up with a matchstick i would see that the flame also does this like this and if i change the frequency of the sound or the number of cycles that come per the number of wavelength that comes per unit time i will see that the wave pattern also changes so this is what is done here you can see this tube the metal tube has lpg filled in and on one side it is closed the other side we this tube is uh, lpg enter uh, uh, there is a this mobile is held by this girl here and there is a rubber septum which can actually transfer the waves so you can see i am not playing the sound maybe i should so as the sound frequency changes the flame pattern also goes on changing so it is tracing the same wave what we have actually produced nice isn't it it's called rubel tube experiment okay so this this particular experiment gives us an example of that sound waves are waves and those are longitudinal waves that means the way the wave travels it forms from pressure Yeah, sir, it's not audible to me. Oh, okay, I think sir dropped in the call. Okay. Hello. Yeah, hello, sir. You are not audible. Yeah, we can hear you now. Sir. Hello. Yeah, you are audible now. Yeah, hello, sir. You are audible now. Hello. Yeah, hello, sir. You are audible. Oh. Hello, Ravi. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, we are there. I'm and your internet kind of had a problem. Um, yeah. Uh, so. did they see i mean where did i get lost from this uh, like a few seconds that's it few seconds okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. i'm sorry this sorry is sorry this Hello, so if you are speaking, we can't hear you. We can see the presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah
okay okay i'm sorry <laughs> okay yeah. so uh, okay i said that this is something which we saw just now the object moves uh, oscillates back and forth and uh, same path and when it goes and comes back uh, it takes up the same time every time doing the same uh, cycle and how many such oscillations it does in a given time like for example if i count it in 10 minutes how many cycles happen divide by divide that number by 10 it is the frequency like if i have to tell you for example if we when we go by bus and so on like that we know that every 10 every 15 minutes there a bus is expected so we say an hour there should be four buses so four is a frequency of the bus so if there are every 5 minutes there is bus so then it is uh, roughly uh, 60 by 5 uh, so you will get 12 buses or something like that so that is a typically frequency so how many such cycles how many such rotations happen in a given time is your frequency or of the particular of that particular wave okay and the maximum position that it goes like for example here it has gone here and on the other side it goes here so this is my basically 2a maximum amplitude that one can get from the mean position mean position is here this is a and this is also a so amplitude is the maximum displacement of particle from the mean position and this is one particular cycle one wave complete oscillation that it makes you may have seen this in uh, some kind of tall structures they have zoomer or something lantern which is being put in inside so as long as the cord can be considered as massless the amplitude and the amplitude is small it executes a simple harmonic motion and the period of that the period means the time that it takes for every cycle it will not depend on the mass of the particle but it will depend on the length of that string and so on like that okay so we have seen waves and this is what is we have seen in springs we have seen in uh, uh, oscillatory behaviors uh, it is also being seen in like for example a particle or a drop of something falls onto the water and this is what you get okay so i told you that there these are the attributes of a wave that maximum displacement the maximum the maximum displacement that it can actually make from this mean position up to this is the amplitude of that particular wave okay and this amplitude need i mean it is fixed for all the cycles so if there is one such cycle from here to here this is second cycle so each cycle is called as a wavelength and how many such wavelengths come in given unit of time is called as frequency and the time that it takes for one period is called as a time period right and the velocity is basically your wavelength multiplied by frequency so we will see certain examples and certain features of uh, of waves okay uh, certainly uh, i have some collection of objects here i am going to uh, use these to demonstrate some of these things okay yeah Yeah. Okay. I unshare. So the first example of light wave that we are going to see is reflection. Okay. You may you have seen. I mean, the best example is mirror. I mean, you take something and you shine it onto the mirror. It will get reflected. We are going to see some similar example of a reflection from. light from a surface okay now you can enlarge my video and you can see so i have i have basically a beaker here right and in this beaker i have water okay and what i am going to do is that we want to see how does so i have a laser beam here you can see this basically it's a very low energy low intensity so i can put my hand there right and you have to put it in a little bit of a dark setting it's very difficult to make dark because there is a lot of daylight here okay you should 
put it on the side. I hope you all can see this. I am going to put this red laser there. You see this uh, trying to make it darker. Make it okay. You can see that the beam of light actually is reflected back from the surface, and it's at the same angle. If I change the angle, Ravi, can you see? Yeah, yeah, sir, you are visible. It's clearly visible. It's visible, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can see that the light actually is suspended from the water surface, and it it comes back. So that is the property of light that we are talking about. One is the reflection. The other is. It's going to keep it on hold for some time. The other property, um, I'm sure you have heard about it. It's called refraction. Okay, refraction is something which you have seen in your um, says anything. I mean, water which is kept in there, right? So I have this beaker which is kept in with this water body. Okay. Now, what is uh, what is the law of reflection that we have seen? We have seen that when you put in uh, light beam on a reflecting surface it basically traces the same angle back as the angle at which it has come right so it is this angle which is uh, uh, which is the same as long as the medium is the same okay however if the medium changes if it enters into a different medium which is either rarer or denser than that this be, the ray is not going to have the same angle it will change depending on the velocity uh, depending on the velocity of light rays of in that particular medium or rather the density of that medium and that density basically decides the refraction Sorry, sir. I think you aren't audible. Okay. I have a paper here, and I have this arrow with me. Okay, I have made it on this paper. What I am going to do is that you know, this light rays when they are going to get reflected from a particular thing, we can't really see how much it is really reflected. Maybe by putting in an object, we can see that it can actually get uh, reflected by this. Okay, that change in the I put the same petri dish into this. And it is not being seen inside. It is because this particular liquid is not water, but you can see how viscous it is. It is denser than water. It is glycerol or glycerine. It has the same refractive index like what this material is. So when it goes inside into that liquid, we can't see this particular object because it does not bend light and we cannot see this. 
from when it enters from that liquid to this glass. Okay, and that is most the reason that most of the time they use similar liquid for uh, looking at biological uh, objects in an optical microscope. Okay. So that is one thing. The next thing that I am going to do is I have this paper and we want to see the refraction of light. You will see in one example. So I put this. I see the arrow. But the arrow is in the same direction as that of the top arrow, whereas actually it is not. Okay. It is because, see, now it is because the light rays which are coming from here, they are getting passed from the water uh, beaker and the beaker acts like a lens and it kind of magnified or changes this if the arrow not only just gets inverted, but it also looks bigger. Okay, so depending on what is the distance that is held. Now it is because the magnifying property that it says it shows from here. You can see the same magnifying property. However, the image here is I have a lens. You can see that the image is magnified. Further away I move it, uh, it is it is magnifying. Okay, so basically lens, you know, at this glass lens because of its curvature, it has some focal points, and that focal points uh, beyond that, if you put it, it will magnify faster. And it may, uh, depending on the type of lens being used, it will look either inverted and uh, magnified or real and uh, not magnified and not real so on so forth. Now this is one. The next is you. You may have studied about the concept of interference uh, about light, interference of light from some object. Uh, like you know, we'll just go back to our PPT for a minute, and then I'll come back to this interference demonstrations. Okay. Okay, so the first thing that we saw was reflection and you know reflection we saw that from a smooth surface it gets reflected with the same angle and the angle of incidence is same as angle of refraction. We also saw that this pencil looked like a bit of a bent from whatever we dipped it into water. So it is because the, the, when the light rays passes from one, in, uh, one medium to the other medium, the denser medium, it moves away from the uh, uh, denser medium, it moves closer to the normal and then it kind of uh, goes back to this one, right? From glass to again light it comes, it is bent again, okay? And the next that we are going to see is the interference, interference of two waves which are being uh, produced. So we have two waves uh, like this, right? If they are completely, their phases are same, okay? If they are in phase, this is what we saw, the angle, remember the circles, uh, this thing, the mag the initial mean position is the same, right? So they that means they are in phase, they are coherent, and these two produce the amplitudes then get added up and produce a larger amplitude. It produces a bright light there. If they are completely out of phase, like the guy did 180 degree flip, right? So these two waves are again 180 degree flip, uh, you can imagine, right? So these two then kind of cancel out each other and it makes a destructive interference they it cancel out the total intensity and what if, if if it is not completely in phase or completely out phase it depends on what is the phase difference between the two that will decide what will be the resultant wave like okay so effectively if i produce two identical waves and at some point if they are having a constructive interference they will produce a bright fringe that means they will add it up in, in the intensity and they will produce a dark fringe where they are out of phase and that will give me a dark fringe or the dark spot, right? So from the same light rays, we can produce it. The other concept that, so uh, that is interference, but how do these uh, two waves basically are going to interfere? 
there is a concept called diffraction in diffraction what happens is you have light which is coming in and because of some obstacle the light gets bent you can imagine this light ray which is coming straight it goes in this direction or in this direction and so on like that okay and once it produces such thing there are two virtual sources which are produced here and they kind of produce an interference pattern so for, for the diffraction first what happens is bending of light and from there it will uh, generate a pattern like for example and then it has to have its uh, type of uh, this thing so we are going to see some examples based on this i am just going to stop sharing and then i'll go back to the camera okay just excuse me for the sound that we get here okay so i i am keeping this paper here just a minute yeah i'm back okay so what i have is i have this thing with me the white rays definitely i can initially start with this fellow so these two lines these are are the lines or the rulings on the scale are going to produce some uh, interference pattern from here i'm sure uh, if you are interested in why uh, basically these two lines act as a, again were secondary sources and then from there two wave fronts travel and when they, those two waves superimpose either if they are in phase or they are out of phase that is decided by the distance between the two okay can see here So there, so it is the fringe width is decided by what lambda d by d. So the distance between the two sources and the distance between the screen. Just a minute, and do that. Yeah. Mm, can you see it on the board? Okay, let me try it. If I'm, it is seen here, but I'm, uh, unfortunately, it is not being seen by the. Uh, Just a minute. I need to set it up. Okay, I hope now it will work. When it works, but you know, seeing that thing. See that vertical uh, this thing. I I have other something which is called as photonic crystal. It is again the same grating. Okay. Now with that grating, it kind of produces. So you can see this is. You can if I move this, it produces different colors. produces different color that is because of the scattering of light ok 
Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shine light from these. You can see produces three vertical patterns. Okay. This is the diffraction because of the horizontal lines. And if I do it with the vertical one, I get this. So this is one dimensional grating. So it is giving me patterns on this thing. If I do it with the intersection, there is a two dimensional diffraction. You can see all four two on the top, bottom and two on the left and right. So that is your two dimensional grating diffraction. It is basically light is first of all bending because of ruling on these lines. And then secondly, it is getting interfered and it is producing these diffraction spots. Now, another interesting thing, I'm not sure how clearly it will be visible. Uh, what I have here is, this is basically your butterfly wing. Okay, this butterfly wings are also some kind of gratings or some kind of nanoscale or very low dimensional uh, structures and when you put in light onto that it produces this kind of interference you can see Mm -hmm. Ravi, I have, I have no feedback whether people are seeing it. So just yeah, yeah, it's, it's visible, yeah. You can, you can see several spots because of this. Yeah. Maybe I'll do it from here. Okay. So again, this... All these butterfly wings, these are showing very wide colors. It, it's all primarily because of their structures, which it has like scale rulings or different. You can just uh, Google or you can just explore this in online. Uh, the structure of butterfly wings, that is also some kind of a, a grating. It's grating means number of lines per unit. Uh, this thing is... Uh, parallelly spaced lines which produce this. So I think that with that, uh, oh, there is one more thing which I have. Hmm? So I have this which is called as Crookes apparatus. Okay. So this Crookes apparatus this particular thing it's a it's something which is, uh, there are a couple of uh, black and white, I mean, there are some metallic sheets which are uh, coated with black on one side and white on the other side. And they are mounted on a tip of a pin, okay, and inside a vacuum bulb, I mean, an evacuated bulb, okay. Now, there is this property of light which is, uh, when it is, you know, light is comprised of various colors and when you mix them you get white and then there is absence of color which is black and uh, the black is something which is a very good absorber it absorbs something nice everything uh, and all the light intensity falling on it so what happens to that absorbed light that it converts it into heat so anything which is colored and black will get heated up very uh, very faster so all this solar cooker or everything you see, they are supposed to get heat, uh, heated up by absorbing the solar light and uh, convert that into heat. So what happens is, so here in this one, this is called Crookes radiometer. Basically, the black sides when they are shined with light, they they are going to absorb the the light and it is going to 
see what is happening. So that it is much more. Yeah, it's here. So with this light, the black gets heated up, the air near that gets heated up and it kind of pushes that particular plate and the plate starts moving. Higher the light intensity, higher is the rotation speed. So back in those days, about two centuries back, when it was invented by a fellow called Crook, it used to be, it used to be used to measure light intensity. So if I bring it closer, the intensity is higher, so it will move faster. This is a photothermal effect, effect of light uh, in terms of heat, temperature. So that was the last part for today. And I hope you have enjoyed. Sorry for interruptions, too many of them. And uh, I tried have it uh, at the best. Mm, that's that's all for today from my side. Maybe I'll just summarize quickly. This one I'll go back to the PowerPoint. I'm trying to share something with this one. Yeah, so effectively what we have, we started with the concept of uh, waves, oscillations, types of waves, longitudinal, transverse, transverse wave, we saw an example of uh, light, longitudinal waves, we saw an example of uh, sound, sound waves were produced and uh, they were uh, changed into the pattern by, uh, and that effect was seen with this LPG. You can also demonstrate yourself uh, how sound waves are waves. Uh, whenever there is something like, uh, you know, a moving car which is coming towards you, the sound gets uh, very high, the frequency increases. Frequency increases means the number of waves which are coming in uh, towards you is the number of wavelength coming in given time are increasing and that's why it appears much higher pitch. So that is called as a Doppler effect and uh, yes, so this is our summary. So waves and oscillations can be seen in variety of ways, uh, in variety of ways in our surroundings and uh, most important examples that we can see about the waves are uh, sound and light and uh, yeah, it is being seen right? yeah. And their wave nature can be demonstrated by simple experiments. So that's all for today. I hope you have believed what you have seen. And uh, that was about it. I'd be happy to take your questions. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah, so if anyone among the audience has any questions, you can unmute or uh, put it in the chat box. Yeah, I suppose. Okay. Anyways, so if at all anything is there, anything related to this, or if you have general queries, you can write it to Amesha and they can forward it to us. And yeah, uh, yeah. and we'd be happy to see you maybe somewhere here in ISAR whenever it allows in the future. And uh, thanks for joining. And thank you for inviting me, Amesha, guys. Oh, so, that bulb thing rotating, somebody wrote something. Okay. So it's which one? The last one which you said, is it? 
or whatever i demonstrated yeah i think it was the last one it was the last one so it is i told you know newton's cradle so it just you take up one bulb and uh, release it slowly not like metal ball as you can take it but it will slowly go and dampen uh, by transferring the energy to the other bulb okay the light thing is is artificially synchronized it is not something which is uh, light which is driving it so you can uh, so they have kind of synchronized the speed of bulb glowing by the speed of transfer of momentum from one to the other you can see that is what i said if you know what is the length of the uh, pendulum and what is the mass so uh, if you have this thing you can figure out how much time it would require under root n by g so that much time it will take for one oscillation to complete so you just have to electronically then they have synchronized the glowing of the bulb uh, with the with a period of oscillation hello yeah hello deep babu i think the question was answered so thank you okay deep if uh, someone else has a question you can put it up or yeah okay so if there are no questions so uh, it was a wonderful presentation and thank you for the amazing demonstrations your outreach uh, in, in institutional visits maybe we can do much better job so yeah. then they will be able to believe much better than what they see so yeah so yeah but yeah. i think it was it, it was like uh, visible enough to understand uh, yes yes yeah. thanks yeah thank you sir for the talk and uh, we are very glad for the talk and uh, thank you everyone for attending this talk uh, i think they were tired for after the entire day that is true that is true yeah take rest maybe it is there on youtube you can watch it again thanks for attending the last two talks yeah it's fine okay right. thank you guys for attending and staying with us throughout the day and hopefully you enjoyed it if you don't mind uh, like if you have any suggestions like how we can do it in a better manner in the next year on board you can let us know can we yeah there? sure you yes, can yes. leave and if you have any questions regarding anything like general questions or like suggestions for us you can just unmute and speak otherwise yeah you are good to leave Okay, so assuming there is nothing in specific, let's end the session, right? Yeah, sure. Okay.